to you and thank you for joining us again for another virtual worship service here at Macedonia. This makes week 22 that we have gathered online with an online God. We are grateful and we're thankful that you have taken the time to be with us today. We ask that you would like this, that you would share this as somebody in your network of friends that needs to worship with you today. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord, where our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Put your hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise wherever you are in the world. Father, we thank you today for our life, our health, our strength. We thank you for our joy and our peace. We ask God that you would bless us today, that we would understand what your will is for our lives. Allow us to feel a sense of your glory of your power and your purpose. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Celebrate our choir as they come now with our morning selection.
looking at your testimony. Don't know how, but he did it. Made a way for you. Moved mountains and caused walls to fall. You're still alive because of his grace, because of his mercy, because he made a way for you. What a mighty God we serve today. Can you help us thank our music ministry, our audio and visual team? Uh, they work hard and even effortlessly to ensure that we're able to connect over the streams of technology. Thank you, our music department. Thank you, our audio and visual team. Please now pay attention to our announcements for the week. Macedonia, good morning. Today is August 16th, 2020. Lord God, you have brought us again to the beginning of a new school year. We pray for a hedge of protection over every student, teacher, support staff, administration, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, school board workers, school board members, and everyone that enters the door of the school as they embark on this new endeavor. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Join us this afternoon at 4 o'clock p.m. for the Baptist Christian Doctrine Sunday School Sessions. Call 605-472-5383, access code 574-838. Let's study God's Word together every Saturday at 4 o'clock p.m. for the Sunday School Conference Call. Please call 515-604-9034. Access code 987-616. If you would like to give, we have five ways of giving to Macedonia. You may mail a check or money order directly to the church at 502 South Daniel Morgan Avenue, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29306. You can give online through PayPal at mmbcsc.org. Mobile online giving using Givelify and Cash App, Macedonia Spartanburg, or in person on Sundays at the Welcome Center from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., or the church office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We thank you for your financial contributions of tithes, offerings, gifts, and donations. Have a blessed week, and thank you for tuning in to Macedonia News. Amen. We ask that you will govern yourself according to those announcements that you might stay connected uh, to our fellowship and to our ministry. The word of the Lord today comes from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 18, 19, and 20. In the NIV translation of the text, here's how it reads. Because the Lord revealed their plot to me, I knew it. For at the time he showed me what they were doing, I had been like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not realize they had plotted against me, saying, let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living. Let his name be remembered no more. But you, Lord Almighty, who judge righteously, test the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance of them, for to you I have committed my cause. Again, because the Lord revealed their plot to me, I knew it. At the time he showed me what they were doing, I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. As we look at this text, I want to preach from the subject today, when God shows you who they really are. When God shows you who they really are. I rose to preach this morning just to a handful of you to tell you to stop blaming yourself for the other people's bad behavior. Some of us have been tricked into feeling sorry for people or even blaming ourselves for the decisions that other people make. Many of us can relate to Jeremiah in this text. We too have been like lambs led to the slaughter, so busy working and thinking and doing 
that we forgot how to watch and pray. And we are now learning again how to keep our minds covered in the blood of Jesus. Jeremiah, ladies and gentlemen, his ministry began under the reign of uh, King Josiah, King uh, uh, Judah's last good king, and continued through the last four bad ones. It was Jeremiah to whom God told him, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and called you and ordained you. Jeremiah often told the people to repent of their sins and return to God, that it was a requirement that God would, in fact, give them a new heart. And the overarching theme of Jeremiah is that God is patient and God delays judgment, and that we are to turn away from our idols and we are to condemn social injustice. Many of us, in fact, all of us, are to be grateful for the patience and the mercy of God. One of the uh, striking realities of interesting of this age of wearing masks in public is that now we rarely get a chance to see each other smile in public. Yet one of the reasons why there should still be a smile under your mask is because of all of the many ways God has provided a way of escape for you. Because God has allowed things to happen in your life, God has brought you from a mighty long way. That if you take your life and all of the things that you think are important to you and put them into one of three categories, glass, metal, or rubber, the things that are rubber, when you drop them, when you drop them, they bounce. No real harm is done to them when you drop them. If you drop a ball, it'll bounce. There are some things in life that if you drop them, nothing in your life really changes. It's because it's in your rubber category. There are some things that are in your metal category. When you drop them, they make a lot of noise, but you can still recover. If you miss the meeting, it might not be a good thing. It might make a lot of noise, but it's not the end of the world. If you spend too much money and haven't balanced your budget, your bank might notify you of an overdraft fee. It might make some noise in your life, but you can recover because it's in your metal category. But then there are some things that are in the glass category that if you drop them, they shatter into pieces and they will never be the same again. You can glue them back together, but they are still forever altered. They may even be missing a few pieces. Never will they hold water again without linking because the consequences of being dropped have impacted them for the rest of their life. Only you know what you can drop and be okay with. And only you know what you can't afford to let hit the ground. And maybe the shout for somebody listening to me is you have learned how to walk away from people and situations that threaten your peace and diminish your self-respect. And in the midst of it all, you have not lost your praise and you've not lost your mind. That's what the writer of the song was talking about. Um, I thank you for it all. The good, the bad, the ugly and small, the times of victory and when I fall and I thank you for my tears and the pain helped me overcome my fears. You've been good to me down through the years. It's a miracle that I'm still standing here. And I do understand it's early in the sermon, but if God has ever got you out of a hole, you ought to be smiling. If God has ever got you out of a sick bed, then you should be smiling. If God has ever brought you back from the brink of ballistic, you ought to have a smile on your face. All of the ways God has made and all of the doors God has opened. Jeremiah in this text is thanking God for being God. Has been said, ladies and gentlemen. That when you meet the wrong one, the wrong one will find you in peace, but leave you in pieces. And I feel like I need to remind somebody in this sermon that while the enemy of your life has a plot, God has a plan. It was Max Licato who said, in the hands of God, intended evil becomes eventual good. That one of the most frightening realities of your relationship with Jesus is that once you put your trust in God, all hell now intends to make your life miserable. But God 
knows how to take intended evil and turn it into eventual good. And I rose to remind somebody and tell you that you will get through this. There comes a time when trouble and breakup is necessary. And I'm preaching a word to somebody this morning. You no longer feel comfortable with who you are or with where you are. You find yourself tiptoeing around yourself and worried about being judged and you find yourself always having to apologize for who you are. You're always wrong and always trying to please people and you've been praying and maybe what you need to do is start packing and somebody listening to me, you have had to make difficult decisions in the midst of this quarantine but one thing is for sure, Maya Angelou said it best, when someone shows you who they are you ought to believe them can you type it on the screen when someone shows you who they are, you ought to believe them and isn't it necessary sometimes in life you can be staring at the truth face to face and still choose to ignore it. And I'm praying for somebody on the other side of that camera. I'm praying because you've been connected to phony friends. And the reason why I'm praying for you is because you would rather keep your eyes closed than admit the truth. And it is possible to know that something is not real and still love it. Did you hear what I just said? I said it is possible to know that something is not real and still love it. You know she fake, but you still love her. You know he's a liar, but you still love him. You know you are listening to me. You know that relationship is over, but you still love them. And the situation is not real, but your heart is connected to it. You know it won't last, but you still love it. And there are times in life when God will show show you the real heart and the real intentions of the people around you and when somebody loves you they will love you even when loving you is hard to do when somebody loves you they'll find a way to love you when it gets hard and yet there are some people that love you but have no loyalty there are um, times ladies and gentlemen when God will put people together but then there are times when God will take people out of your life here's the hard truth there are times when God will show you something ugly about other people but then there are times when God will show you something ugly about yourself and I wonder is there anybody on the other side of that camera who can give God the glory because what the devil tried to throw at you everything but the kitchen sink some way and somehow you're still standing and it's really because the enemy's plot was disturbed and disrupted by God's hand and I don't even know if you're listening to me but one of the reasons why you're still alive is because God blocked it the reason why you didn't lose your mind is because God blocked it the reason why you don't look like what you've been through is because God blocked it the reason why you ain't taking 20 pills every day right now. It's because what the enemy meant for evil God meant it for your good there are some people who have no idea how close you came to losing it and no idea how close you came to getting fired and no idea of how close you were to being homeless and stuck in a bad situation have no idea how many phony friends you had and I don't know who this is for but I rose to tell you that your enemy is close to you they are so close to you the person who is destroying you and jeopardizing your future is so close to you that you don't even consider them to be an enemy. Jeremiah says in the text, I was like a lamb brought to the slaughter. I didn't even realize they were plotting against me. And I don't know who this is for today, but the shout in your spirit is this I am completely done. I'm tired of people making me look like a fool. I'm 
I'm tired of people knowing what's going on in my house and I don't even know what's going on in my house. I'm tired of being the last one to know when I should be the first one to know. I'm preaching to somebody the enemy of your life is still trying to figure you out because he thought what he did to you was going to wipe you out. You lost friends, people lied on you, some folk turned their back on you, you got sick, you lost your job, friends got few, money got funny, y'all ain't helping me, but God rose you up from the ashes of your hurt, you were wounded but you made it. Now that you've got your strength back, here's what you rose to tell the devil to do. I'm limping, but I'm leaving. The enemy tried to eat you up, tried to swallow you whole, but he didn't realize that what you were made of would not allow you to be devoured. You're limping, but you made it. You were in the mouth of a killer. You were in the mouth of somebody who was trying to let you die but you made it you should have kept moving and you should have kept surviving but the fight of your life is the testimony is I'm limping but I made it wounded but I'm leaving hurt but I'm leaving Lord can y'all please put that turtle back up there please just put him back on the screen leave him there for a little while and tell somebody I'm limping but I'm leaving wounded but I'm leaving hurt but I'm leaving gotta take some medicine but I'm leaving scared and still full of pain but I'm leaving and when you leave in the words of Tupac leave with your head up they thought they were gonna kill you but you kept on moving and you got away and I rose to tell you lift your head up when you walk away cause weeping may endure but joy comes in the morning every now and then you ought to ask your enemy what did you think I was going to do when my friend stabbed me in the back what you think I was going to do when my body broke down what you think I was going to do when the job told me they wanted their office and their title back what did you think I was going to do when the money got funny and the circumstance went from bad to worse and I learned a long time ago you got to hold your head up when you walk out the door and some of y'all ought to be thanking God of the traps you walk away from and the plots you pass by and the rumors you outlived because what the devil meant for evil God turned it toward your good the tension of this text is the boundaries of relationships between Jeremiah and the people in his own hometown they hated Jeremiah they knew him and they still hated him they hated Jeremiah Ladies and gentlemen, because he had the nerve to call a spade a spade. Tension in the text is that people hated Jeremiah, but these are the same people that knew him, but he had no idea how much they hated him. Here's what they said, let's destroy the tree and the fruit. God help me. In other words, they wanted Jeremiah gone. And not only did they want him gone, but they wanted the evidence of his existence to cease to be. It wasn't good enough just to cut the tree down. They had to destroy the fruit because the fruit had a seed in it. They wanted Jeremiah gone and the evidence of his existence wiped out of the memory of anybody who knew him. This is for a hundred and two of you who are listening to me. The enemy is not only after you. He's after the evidence of your existence. And I need somebody who has been sleep through this sermon to just put on the screen I will not be erased. I will always stand out. I will always be different. I will always be unique. And when people try to make you disappear, the problem is they can't erase you. God 
told Jeremiah before I formed you in your mother's belly I called you and sanctified you and ordained you to be who I wanted you to be and there's nothing more painful than being betrayed by people you know and being hurt by people who know your heart and who know your desires and who know your character but they still decide to hurt you and some of you listening to me have been hurt so bad and hurt too many times and that's why you don't trust nobody and that's why you don't fool with nobody because you don't want the next one to get close enough to hurt you the way the last one did but can I remind you dear child of God that betrayal is a part of every gifted life that if you are going to be used by God you will have to deal with the sting of betrayal David had his Absalom Paul had his John Mark Jeremiah had his enemies and Jesus had his Judas I mean even our Savior eyes to the blind feet to the lame feeder of the hungry ears to the deaf mouth to the dumb but with all of his miraculous splendor and majesty and might he still had to deal with a frenemy you know what a frenemy is that's an enemy dress a friend dress up like an enemy and you will have them too OJ called them backstabbers smile in your face all the while they're trying to take your place Jeremiah knew these people that were planning to destroy him but he didn't know they were planning to destroy him look at what he said he said it's because the Lord revealed the plot that I knew it because when God showed me their plan Jeremiah said I was like a lamb led to the slaughter I didn't realize they hated me that bad and I'm preaching to you dear child of God here's the tough question of the text can you trust God when God shows you some stuff you don't want to see but you need to see Jeremiah says I had no idea they hated me like that no idea they were plotting and planning on me like that I was clueless until God showed it to me and here's the question can you trust God when God shows you some stuff you don't want to see but some stuff you need to see when God shows you the person you love don't love you when God shows you the person you trust in worthy to be trusted when God shows you that people you want to change will never change when God shows you if you stay with them uh, you will forever be dealing with what you're dealing with with them can you trust God Lord help me when God shows you some things you don't want to see some of you listening to me have completely missed the point that man or woman didn't break y'all up God broke y'all up the judge didn't break y'all up God broke y'all up. Coronavirus ain't stopping y'all from getting together. God stopped y'all from getting together. And somebody listening to me, you should thank God for every vampire, for every goon, for every carpet muncher God pulled out of your life. Because just because y'all are together, somebody, God is pulling y'all apart. When God begins to remove folk from your life you got to stop spending a lot of time crying about it and learn how to be glad about it be glad that you saw their true colors be glad that you learned their true intentions it might be hard to watch God rip somebody out of your life but you better learn how to shout your troubles over don't forget it was God who told Abraham get out from among your kinfolk and go to a land that I'll show you don't forget it was God who asked Samuel how long are you going to mourn over Saul I have rejected at him don't forget it was Jesus who said the wheat and the tail will grow together but on the last day God will separate don't forget it was the Holy Spirit in Acts who said separate me Paul and Barnabas there are times 
When God will show you who a person is, not so that you can change them, not so that you can minister to them, but so that you can leave them. And I understand, I ain't preaching to everybody, but some of you listening to me, God is trying to remove somebody from your life. God has been giving you red flags the whole time, and you keep trying to paint them pink. Your foolish self talking about it ain't that bad. How many times have they let you down? How many chances have you given them? One of the worst things about being strong is that nobody knows when you're hurting. So you learn how to cry in the dark and take long routes back to the house. But I know this ain't for you, and I don't know this may not be for nobody. You know, but somebody, I need you to put it on the screen. God knows this ain't for me. I mean, I don't even like wearing hospital gowns. Why would I let you tear my nerves up? Some of y'all would rather be noticed than to be yourself. And that's your problem. What did it cost you to be noticed? How much of you did you have to change in order for them to see you? The sad part about it is some of us want to be seen so bad. We'd rather be noticed than just to be ourselves. And some of us, ladies and gentlemen, would do anything to get the promotion. Would do anything to get a bigger check. Would cut anybody's throat just to get ahead. And yet somebody listening to me, God is exposing manipulators and perpetrators in your life so they will not hurt you in your future I am preaching to a handful of you stop wasting time trying to explain who you are to people who are committed to misunderstanding who you are you can't keep hanging around with folk hoping they will understand you when they have no intentions of understanding you they will deplete you exhaust you weaken you and demean you but God I wonder, do I have two or three people online who have a but God moment? Jeremiah said, I didn't know they hated me, but the Lord showed me. I didn't know they wanted me dead, but the Lord showed me. And I'm talking to somebody this morning. You have discovered during this pandemic, uh, what you've discovered is that you can live without them, but you can't live without God. God told me to tell you that you can live without them, but you better keep God in your life look at what jeremiah said in verse 20 he said lord i want to see your vengeance on them go don't miss the text jeremiah didn't pray lord forgive them no jeremiah said lord get them and when you get them i want to see it and there are ladies and gentlemen people in your life who have been unnecessarily evil. They have lied to your face when you would have forgiven them for the truth. They have cut you, beat you, hurt you, had you jumping through hoops like a doggone circus animal. You tried to please them, but they still misused you and abused you. And the crazy part is, they said they was a child of God, but their shallow worship doesn't change the fact they still have blood on their hands. Here's what I want you to know is you who are evil and you who are a manipulator I want you to know you're going to pay for everything you have done to a child of God I know y'all don't like it but I'll say it again God going to get all of them God going to make all of them pay for everything they did to you. And some of you are looking at that screen right now. And you trying to act like you ain't never seen color purple until you do right by me. Everything you think about going to crumble. I want to remind you who are wicked and rude and nasty and dish it but you can't take it. Public insults and private apologies do not go together. It's amazing how people can gossip in public but apologize in private. Don't apologize in their DM. Apologize on their wall so that everybody can see how fake you really are. And I do understand, ladies and gentlemen, that this sermon is not a makeup sermon. This is a breakup sermon. And the problem with some of y'all is you having makeup sex with people God wants you to break up with. 
y'all at home and you still don't like me but this ain't no Luther Vandross a house is not a home this is Ray Charles hit the road Jack this is Justin Timberlake cry me a river this ain't Nat King Cole unforgettable this is Beyonce irreplaceable to the left to the left everything you own in a box to the left this ain't Al Green let's stay together this is Taylor Swift we ain't never getting back together and I don't know who this word is for but somebody this week God is going to help you say goodbye to some stuff goodbye to sadness goodbye to addiction God is going to transform your life and help you say goodbye to frustration goodbye to loneliness goodbye to folk trying to use you and abuse you goodbye to people loving you and hating you at the same time if they want the house give them the house if they want the money give them the money if your friends walk away let them walk away just give me Jesus I'm talking to somebody you shout not because of what you have but you shout over what don't have you no more you shout because you reflected that you're willing to walk away you shout over stuff no you shout because you walked away and left some stuff behind please hear me your shout is based on where you're headed and what you survived tell somebody Jesus help me say goodbye goodbye to pain goodbye to sorrow goodbye to trouble goodbye goodbye God is a God of miracles God is a God of wonders and he's got all power got it in his hand look at somebody and tell your neighbor God is bringing me out weeping may endure but for a night but joy I said joy coming in the morning look at somebody in the room with you now and tell them I will survive every plot I will survive every plan because God talks to me God walks with me God tells me I am his own weeping may endure for a night but joy I said joy coming in the morning say yeah say yeah say yeah 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 when God when God shows you who they really are thank him for it trust him in it hold your head up because no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper God is showing you during this pandemic in the season of quarantine you can live without them who you can't live without is God He'll walk with you, talk with you along the way. And if you're out there, it's not a time to be a Rambo saint. You need to be plugged into Jesus. You need a good church home. I'd love to be your pastor. We're going to put some information on the. If you've never said yes to him, why don't you give God a yes? If you hear God speaking to your heart, your mind, and your soul about salvation, about getting your house in order won't you call that number reach out to us with that email on the screen we'd love to hear from you pray for you we'd love to invite you into our church family don't live another day without saying yes to the master he'll take you just like you are transform you day by day minute by minute second by second Reach out to us. We'd love to hear you. I'm going to pray. Our choir is going to come. We want you to be blessed. Father, we thank you now for an opportunity to worship you, a chance to hear you, a chance to read and study your word together. Give us the strength, the courage, 
Give us the grace to be able to leave toxic environments, dangerous situations. And God, even if we got a limp, we still leave it. We love you and we thank you. Take this word, this worship, bury it deep in our hearts that it might bring forth fruit in due season. We shall forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us before his presence with exceeding joy. Now unto him, the only wise God, with glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. Love you out there. Stay safe. Stay sane. Stay satisfied. We'll see you next week.